Exciting. Hello. Yeah. Hello and welcome to Walking with the Duda API webinar. Tell us where you're from and have you already tried using Duda API? Don't hesitate to ask questions all the way through. I'll be personally tracking them and we'll take I'll make sure that um, everything is asked during the presentation and afterwards. You can do that in the chat box and actually here or there. I also suggest that you subscribe to do this newsletter in order not to miss any webinar in the future and attend them live. This one is recorded and you can watch it anytime, though we'll be happy if you are with us today. Uh, okay, now we'll be going to creating a custom Duda API using either Duda templates or using your own custom templates for lead generation. And our wonderful guests, Brian Lewis and uh, Prashant Pant will be helping and uh, answering your questions today and making a presentation. Brian founded WebAct uh, Incorporation in 2012 to help small businesses create a better online experience with website design and online marketing services. Brian started the company with the idea of giving small businesses a chance to compete with large companies without the big cost. Say hi, Brian. Can you add something to that? Yeah. Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome. And uh, we're excited to go over the uh, Duda API with you. Okay. And uh, another guest, Prashant Pant, CTO at Webact, professional experience in all phases of software development lifecycle, including analysis, design, development, integration, installation, implementation, maintenance, testing, and debugging of various client server web applications. Hello, Prashant. Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to the webinar and excited to get started. <laughs> okay, and me, myself, I'm SEO entrepreneur and I manage several SEO oriented businesses and localization services. And I'm also happy to be on this webinar because I have my the questions of my own and actually tried a few bits myself, but uh, was not very successful. So I'll be also asking Brian and Prashant to help me where I did start. But maybe after presentation, I won't have these so many questions. And um, um, I know that um, today, Brian has prepared something really interesting, which what we have not done before, something of a demo kind. Can you tell us more about that? Yeah, so we're going to be going over um, the advanced DIY editor. Um, how to display that on your website. And then we will also be going over the new simple editor um, and adding that to your arsenal uh, to be able to capture some clients and be able to have a quick lead gen uh, for them to build websites on your account. So it's not like these usual kind of presentations where we have only slides and everything, but first we will show you something very unique, something that you can utilize on, your own, on yourself and we can maybe jump to a demo, Brian. Perfect. Uh, yes, I will uh, share my screen here and we will go ahead and get started. Okay. Um, as you can see, um, this is on our actual website where we are actually displaying all of the templates that are directly from Duda, uh, where they are able to preview um, as well as start a website and going right into the editor. Um, so let's go ahead and just start right here with this template. Um, so you, you can go in here and you can be able to enter in all this information as a client. Um, this way you can capture all the information um, once they start building the website um, on your account. And say they do, don't finish the website, you can reach out to them at that point. Um, this is a great way for people to try out the editor, be able to try out building the website themselves, but you know, if, if they can't do it, um, you'll have all their contact information to be able to reach out to them in the future. So let's go ahead and get started. Right. And then we can put in a phone number as well. And let's just say, Jeff here does not have a website. So I want to type the template they selected. Let's 
So right here, what's going on is we're in the back end creating the account for the client and then redirecting them to the dashboard using SSO. And as this is loading up, uh, you'll be very familiar with this. So this is going to be the regular editor um, that you get now. Um, so they can go through, um, they can completely build their own website. They'll have full access to um, everything that you have access to, uh, um, to build the website. So they'll have all of the design, the pages, um, all of the widgets, the content, the personalization. Um, so they can kind of go through here and um, start adding their logo, or if they were wanting to change out some buttons or add some content, they can be able to do all of that right here. Um, the template's already created, so we can go through and put the, um, they have the pages created so they can modify those or add pop-ups or go into their SEO settings, change all this data. So they can really build out the full website, which is great. Um, if, you know, they already know the website platform or, you know, they, they know how to build websites, they can go through here and build a full website. For how so, long? How long does it take? Usually? Yeah. Yeah, um, it really, it depends on their skill level. Um, I mean, it, it, if they're just trying to get something up real quick, they could build, select a kind of a one pager template. Um, they could get up that day. Um, something like this, you know, it, it might take them a few days. But what's nice about this is we do send them an email. So if they were to say, all right, I don't want to do this right now, they can go out um, and they'll actually get an email saying, hey, um, you know, you you actually created a website and here is the information to log in. Let me just pull that up for you as well. So they can go right into here and now they have their dashboard here. Um, this is your account as well, but they'll have a dashboard with it'll just show their website in here and they can keep adding. Um, they have their email um, already attached and they'll get an email as well um, stating to set up their password and then they'll have their stats and everything for their website. So they can go back in here later if they don't finish it. Let's see here. And then uh that was it for the actual um, due to editor itself uh, for the advanced. We will um, also want to go over the simple editor, which I will go over next. So the simple editor is a brand new experience. Um, it's a way to build sites quickly. Um, and that's really what most of the people are going to want when they are trying out the editor, um, those type of things. So. What we're going to do here is we are going to build a site with the simple editor. So you're going to want to put in your business name here. Um, this, you actually select the sections that you want for the simple editor, um, which makes it really nice. So if I wanted to go through and select some different options here, I can do that. And then here's choosing a theme. Um, so just choosing a theme real quick. And then I will put in their information here. And you will also get an email on this as well, which is great. And all of this information actually gets dynamically entered into the website. So they have the address there, perfect. And then they can have add their logo. They can add all of their social components as well. So let's just enter in a, a Facebook and an Instagram here. This business does not have a LinkedIn. What if they want to add TikTok? Will they add that too? Yeah, I, I, they can on the other side. Um, so once they actually go into the editor, they can add all of the additional. Um, these are just kind of starters, um, what Duda offers you right from the beginning. 
um, and now it's creating the website. So this is going to be an editor where they're not going to need to know um, how the websites really work. It's all very easy. It's all one page. Um, so they're going to have, you know, a lot less options, which is because somebody that's just starting their business might not want something that's fully integrated um, to where they have all a bunch of advanced information, but as you see, the address is in here, their Facebook and Instagram and their email, it's on their contact form, and now they're able to go through here and make changes in the editor. It looks Which very is nice, isn't it? Yes, and that's the uh, preview of the of both of the editors and now I will pass it off to Prashant and we can go over more of the advanced information. Yeah, of course. Uh, let me pull up my slide right here. All right. So the first thing that you might want to know is, you know, this API, who is it available to and what are the difference, right? So right now Duda offers the API plans to enterprise or some agency with customized payment plans, right? So uh, what happens with agency is what's the difference now? Like if you are paying more cost for the enterprise and then paying a little bit less for the agency, what differences do you get in the API? So the first thing is SSO, single sign-on, right? Uh, as you saw earlier, when Brian entered client's information and hit submit button, it redirected them directly into the dashboard. So that functionality is not available with the agency API. So what, so in a, in a way it kind of breaks the, you know, API flow of us wanting the client to get into the editor. So what's the solution for it? What we have done is, which Brian was not able to show you, but here it is. Uh, once, a person who is on an agency plan put, pu puts out a DIY on his website and a lead comes in and a create a website, they're going to get an email uh, with a link where they can reset the password. So the solution for SSO that we came up with was using reset password API call. So what we do in the back end is get the user and uh, create a link to reset his password and in, embed that link into the email that gets sent to them. So here you can see they can simply click on the button that or the text that says click here and reset the password and get into their dashboard. So that was the solution that we approached on this. And let's talk a little bit about, you know, what's the difference between Duda uh, sites that have been created using the Duda API with advanced editor or the simple editor. So with Duda API, with advanced editor, what we can do in the back end is have an API call that gives you sets of permissions, right? Um, which you can see in the Duda's uh, settings as well. But um, in terms of API, we're gonna have to notify what permissions we want to give them. For example, we might not want to give them permissions to uh, add, add a, a store to it or have them funnel around with collections or lock some widgets or blah, 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 right? All of that can be done via the API in the back end uh, with sets of permissions. And uh, as you can see right here, we excluded you know, the option to add a store or a few other designs option, uh, which is all because of the permissions. Now in the simple editor, you kind of saw it earlier where you know you put in your information, select some sections, um, choose some themes and put your business information, which then uh, takes you to this page initially when you kind of start uh, with a simple editor. At the bottom, you can see you can you can you know switch to the advanced editor or keep working with the um, simple editor. And I believe this option, this initial screen can be eliminated um, by your account manager if you request them to not display this screen at all. So once they are logged in into the simple editor, um, this is what they're going to see. 
if they were to click on, on a text or a button here on the side, you will see what are the things they can change, right? So things like text on the button or the text on the website itself, uh, colors to the text, colors to the buttons, and background, uh, background to the row, right? Um, and in terms of development, right, uh, how does it work? So uh, with the advanced editor option in DIY Flow, there are four steps. Uh, the steps are, so they're going to select a template. Before they select a template, we're going to have to do a get call to fetch all the templates that are in Duda and display them. Right. Once somebody selects a template, we uh, collect some information like the email. Using the email, what we're going to do is create an account. Uh, there is a create account API call, create customer API call in Duda. Once that's created, we're going to provide them sets of permissions. And there's another uh, API call to grant them various permissions that you want your leads to have. Once the permissions is set, uh, the SSO part comes in, which varies if you are uh, on a enterprise plan or a agency plan. But in terms of a simple editor, there's one more step to it, which is setting up a plan ID. So uh, this plan ID could be customized by your account manager to have different permissions for someone who has created sites using simple editor. So let's just say uh, with this permission, uh, if you were to talk with your account manager, you can request them, hey, can I have my leads to have a, you know, to have the ability to add a store to the simple editor? In that case, they're going to create you a custom plan ID, which you're going to be using in the API calls, right? But the default one here would be 810 uh, if you were to use the API calls. And then <clears throat> let's just jump on to some of the questions like how can you customize the Duda API? So the first thing that we did was um, to display the templates um, in a layout and then categorize them. So whenever you make an API call, what happens is Duda sends you the JSON uh, data information on all the templates. However, um, you don't have the design options, right? So what we have done is uh, we have categorized it into different uh, categories like business or restaurants or portfolio or store, one page blog and so on and so forth. So that's one thing that you can customize. And the se second thing that you can customize is to collect information about your lead when they select a template to start with. So this form right here is also customizable. You could uh, you know, have different sets of fields uh, and inputs that you want to ask your leads and collect them. Then comes the welcome email part, so, um, which is kind of missing in the API. But what we have integrated is once a, a lead comes in and creates a website, we send them email like a welcome email saying, hey, you know, thank you for joining us. You can get started here, so on and so forth. So those are the things that you can customize uh, in addition. Yeah, and before we jump to content collections, uh, maybe we uh, return to template pages. So can we just redesign them fully for the customer or the customer themselves? Uh, redesign the template itself? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you can actually set up custom templates um, on your account. So if you're wanting to have the Duda templates themselves, you could we could select just your custom templates that you've created to display here. Yeah. And uh, how often do they do the customers choose the custom templates, so, or is it enough for them to have what you already have in hand? So do you have any statistics? Um, yeah, I would actually say more on the custom templates. And that's because, um, you know, there's a lot of agencies that have, are industry specific. So if they're a, a dental, um, you know, agency where they just go after dental websites, they want to just show their dental templates that they've created. 
um, and they want you know their users to be able to see, hey, we do dentist websites. Here is all of the list of all of the templates that we've created, so then they can get started that way. So we can say that custom templates may increase your lead generation actually, and you have much better results with that. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Sorry, Prashant. No worries. No. So, um, which I was going to show you in the later part uh, as well. We'll get in there uh, slowly. But um, so, you know, let's talk about a few things here, like content collections and content injections, right? What's the difference? So, content collection, uh, data that you can collect from your um, end user or, or your lead uh, via a content collection form that Duda already has, or you could create a custom form to collect all those information, then push it to any websites that you would like or the websites that the lead selected um, via API. So few ways to collect content, right? What are them? <clears throat> this one is content collection form, which is provided by Duda itself. So there are basic information like logo, um, your business information, business details, and social account information. However, um, however, what you can also do is create a custom form. Uh, as you can see, we create a custom form for a client uh, as they need it to collect those information and push it to the website. Uh, in terms of pushing it to the website, there are two ways to do it. One, you could uh, push it directly into the content editor, or you could uh, set it up as a collection and uh, have the information available. Then comes the content injection. Uh, content injection, it provides a way to basically design few elements on your website. So let's say a text, uh, font size, font colors, or anything that you can name in terms of designing. So you could have the inner at HTML where you could pre-populate a text field automatically whenever a lead fills in the information in a form. Using that data, you could use DOM attributes to add JavaScript to certain elements or apply CSS rules to you know, design it however you would want. So in your form, you could have, all right, what's the text you're going to have on this field or this page? What's the color you want to select? What are the other stuff, uh, JavaScript or anything that you want to add to it, which we can do via the content injection. <clears throat> so. API and content injection, once you collect the information via a custom form, you could use API to push all of that information into the sites that has been selected by the lead. <clears throat> now comes to the API plus collection. So it has the similar step as well, a custom form or a Duda form. We like to use custom form because it varies depending on the leads. So using that custom form, you collect the information and create a collection. A collection could be an external database or a collection within a Duda website. So what normally we get is people wanting to use uh, Airtable most of the time. And uh, a few times we, we see clients who wants to use Duda's um, <clears throat> collection itself. So using the form, what we're going to do it, is API collection and connect data now, right? What's going to happen is you have a content collection form, collect the data, you push it off to the collection. It could be either Duda collection or your Airtable that you want to connect to the website. Then you can have multiple custom widgets within the website that can be connected data to all of those information. So we, you could actually create a custom template where all of the widgets are connected data to certain fields. And once your lead fills out our information in a form, all of the data can be directly pushed into the content collection and have it automatically connect data to different various uh, Duda widgets or custom widgets. Then boom, you know, you have a pre-populated website without them having to go into the editor making changes. So those are the advantages of using um, API with collection or API with content injection. 
so this question, we, we kind of went over it, right? Uh, can we add a custom template? So uh, whenever you do a get API call to get all the templates from Duda, it's going to send you all the templates that have been created by Duda along with the templates that you created. So what we did was um, we created a widget where you can just toggle on to just display your custom templates. And we'll automatically get all the custom templates from your account and display it just like the Duda templates. So that's the button that we have in our widget. Toggle in on and off and you'll uh, either display your custom template or the Duda template. And how do I check the leads, right? Um, so you can check your leads in, in the uh, client portion within your Duda dashboard. However, to make things easier, what we have done is uh, created a lead page where you can input your uh, display name that we give you and an API or the template access key, which we will be providing you to log in. And once you log in, you're just going to see all the leads that have been generated um, using your DIY or the simple editor uh, API uh, setups. Yeah. We have a very important question from the audience, Ch Chase Yeti. If Airtable goes away, so you mentioned you can, you can connect with Airtable, do all the connected accounts lose their data? Uh, what do you mean by Airtable goes away? Now, for example, for some reason you refuse Airtable. So you want to switch it off or you want to uh, choose something else or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Might so be. let's say your data is in the Airtable and you want to get rid of it. Uh, what you can do is either manually move over all the content to Duda's collection, or you could use Duda's API call to create a collection and push in all the data from Airtable to Duda's collection itself. OK, thank you. Yeah. So moving on, yeah, once you're logged in uh, to our leads page, you're going to see something like this where you can see name, email, templates, website if they have phone number and any comments and the date they were created at. Uh, now to the question like, OK, let's say the websites are created. This is awesome. Um, you know, We want our leads to publish the website. Can I add my own custom payment gateway? Right. So um, yes, of course, the question is yes. The answer is yes. Uh, what we have done is right now only offered Stripe payment gateway, but uh, any payment gateway that you would like can be connected. So what you can do within your Duda account is in the public public uh, flow, you can open up an iframe in a light box without publishing the site. So uh, what we have done is created a page where we have our plans set, right? And whenever you go to your settings and set this up, uh, once they click a publish button, all of your plans going to display in a pop-up. Um, and the customer can select whichever plan they want to move on with. And once the payment is verified in our end via API calls of the payment uh, plan, we can uh, automate to publish the website itself. Or you could use Duda's um, you know, payment gateway as well. And that is all I had to talk about. Back to you. That's nice. Thank you so much. I think it's so wonderful that you have Zapier integrated already there, and it makes things so much easier just for anyone who can use that. I, maybe I've missed it. Maybe you've mentioned. Do we need to host the API? Do we do that on our end? Right, right. So uh, right now, what we are offering is uh, we host it all in our end, but we could make it possible to where you could have a server and have all the codes for the API call hosted in your end as well. And um, part of your... Okay. Uh, what I also wanted to say is that it makes Duda like not an ordinary website builder out there, but it makes it so customizable, so compatible with everything that it's like much more progressive than everything we have already. So it's much more easier. And uh, I had a question that 
uh, why would the client prefer to use Duda with a widget and not uh, WordPress with a plugin? And I think you fully answered that, but maybe you can add something to this. Brian, Brian maybe you? Yeah, muted. Of course I am. Um, so yeah, there. I mean, there's a lot of reasons. So plugins break um, quite often, um, and does not only does like that portion of the plugin break, but the whole website a lot of the time will show an error code when you first go to it. It's it's a constant thing where you do not know when it's even going to be updated. It could be three in the morning, and you wake up in the morning, and your site's been down for four or five hours, and you're scrambling to try to fix it and update it and get everything going. Um, we had that problem when we first started. We had so many WordPress websites, and I had just a team of developers that just did WordPress updates constantly, going from site to site, uh, being able to try to track down new passwords that the client had changed. Um, it was an absolute nightmare. So now, you know, we just push an update through our widget builder um, and it goes to everybody's account. It's not gonna break the site and uh, that's really key for us. And the uh, security thing, how better is this? Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah, security is great. Um, I don't have, you know, a notebook of username and passwords anymore for all of our clients. Um, I can log into one dashboard and everyone's website's there. Like I can just jump from website to website. Um, it's it's a lot safer uh, for them and for us uh, to where we're not having to do, go through so many steps and passwords and things like that to get into these um, everyone's websites. Everything's under one roof. So it's it's really great. Uh, there is uh, maybe a remark or something. Maybe you understand the question better. Uh, the Taylor's roadmap is uh, saying that out of your presentation, uh, the items that you've listed uh, a la carte to add to the API, API system are not included. Uh, so they are all, everything is custom customized. Maybe you understand this question better. I just didn't want to. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, so the API is something that you do have to have with your system. It is included. If you're wanting to build this yourself, like it's included in your plan. Uh, you definitely need to check with Duda to see what plan you're on. But everything is included. Um, us obviously building it, we can customize it. And then everything would be essentially a la carte if you're wanting uh, content collections or any kind of injected code. Um, or if you needed help um, creating t custom templates, all of that would be um, a la carte if you were wanting us to take care of it. Um, but if if you were wanting to build it yourself, you can definitely do that. And uh, it should be included in your account. Uh, I believe you just need to uh, speak with someone at Duda and they can definitely upgrade your account so you have access to the API. Yeah, uh, you just write to them into support and then they do that. It's like very fast and, and yeah. easy. Yes. And um, one of the um, listeners mixed video number one, they were asking about the background images in mobiles. Can you add it background images for mobiles with API maybe? How do you push these changes through? Yeah, I, I see that Sophia mentioned the article that guides you through on how to do all of that. Um, but mm -hmm. you could probably do it using the content injection itself. Yeah, that, that's why, because you were talking about the content collections and maybe you can right. do that like in bulk. And um, back to the custom templates you listed. I just like this idea that you can customize everything and you can uh, excel your game with lead generation. And it's, it makes life so much easier and uh, no brainer. But um, can you use Duda API to display them or do you host it somewhere else? Uh, For, sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, you could host it anywhere you would like as long as you know it can host any uh files or anything like that what we have done on our end is we are using react to build all of this so all of the api calls and um database and all sort of things are hosted in um aws at the moment uh, on our end but yeah you could simply have google cloud or 
do you host those in Jason's, in Jason files? No, it's not going to be in JSON yeah. files. So what we have in our backend is, um, so let's say a, a customer comes in and they are like, hey, I want to buy your Duda API. What we do is send them a form uh, where we collect information like their Duda API credentials so that we can make the API calls. Those information is are then stored in, into our database with a unique ID. So whenever you drag and drop our widget into your dashboard or your website, uh, the content co content uh, section of the widget itself is gonna ask you that particular ID that only matches or or is unique to your uh, agency account. Once that is input inputted, what we do is in the back end check what the data came in, what the name was, and we're gonna check it in a, into our database to see what are your API credentials. Then what we do is using that API credential, fetch it to your account uh, to see what templates you have. And once that information is in, we create a folder where uh, we redesign the templates uh, to our need, right? Once that's done, another API, another API, internal API call is made in our end to just display all of that uh, templates that you have it in your account. So. A little bit of complex uh, things there, but it, it is definitely possible to do it by yourself. And the form that you are mentioning right now, is this the one from your presentation? Uh, the form? Like that you had. Yeah, yeah, you had a form example in the presentation. Is yeah, that yeah. the same form? So yep. the forms... maybe we can show it in full screen again because when yeah. it was um, sure. shared, when you were talking, and I'll ask Anton to share it full screen. Let's get uh, back to the forms, right? Because it was so small and it was very hard to see. Uh, but, so... but it is, yeah, yeah, yeah this one. Yeah. yeah. Anton, so... can you share it full screen, please? Mm -hmm. uh, okay. This is a custom form. Thank so you. One of our client came us came to us and they were like, "Hey." Uh, I really like the DIY flow and I want to buy it. However, I do want to collect additional information about the lead. So this is a custom form that we created based on their need. It collects all those information. And not only you could look all of that information in, in the lead page that we have created, but also we can push all of this information to the website that uh, a lead creates uh, from. It's wonderful that you can jump into making this business right away. You don't have to lose time on taking all these instructions, putting them together once and again and again and again. And I think it, it's just very yeah. nice to have. We uh, so had a use case once where uh, this customer really liked our DIY and they were mentioning they don't want their team members to go into the website and edit anything, right? They just want uh, a display of all the custom templates, start with it, fill out all the information, boom, the website is ready. So in such use cases, what we did was, okay, we're gonna create a form that is specific to your need. However, you need to create a custom template that fulfills your need. Once that custom template is created, we went into the custom template and connected data various fields that's going to be pre-populated using form, using the custom form that uh, your clients or your leads going to uh, fill it up, right? Once that con uh, connected data is done to all the fields that needs to be pre-populated, using that form data, what we're going to do is collect the data and push it directly to the website. So as soon as you click submit, your website is ready and nothing you have to do to edit the website. Yeah, it's nice. And uh, Jim Falotica is asking, I'm, I'm sorry if I don't pronounce the names correctly, very sorry, I try very hard. What is the business case for an agency to use these for lead gen for the agency? Yeah, uh, there. so there's been quite a few different uh, cases. So um, if, it's really like if you're industry specific, like it's great um, just because then you have a way for the client to not only try out the editor um, so they can start building the websites right away, but maybe you have it set up um, to where, you know, you have 
a Google ad running and then they go into the site, well, not only can they try the editor, they can actually try their hand at building their full website. So just like you're doing on building the websites, logging in, this is a way for them to go in, build all that information, but you're also gathering all that contact information right from the beginning when they're filling that form out to where you can contact them now. Um, so it works for really any industry, um, but we've, we've seen it really in success for a lot of industries that are, um, you know, dental or construction or real estate. Um, they're gathering all this information and able to reach out to them later on if they don't finish the websites and say, hey, we, we can build your site. Or maybe you have it set up with a um, email funnel where it starts sending them emails when they put in that data. So it's just a great way to do that. And then you can move them on to, if you offer advertising or any other type of service, you can also offer them that after you build their website. So I think that local businesses are the first ones to target and maybe big companies with lots of locations where they have local locations. And yes. I think it's very easy to integrate maps also, which is very important with directions and everything. Um, and that's done with API, am I right? Yeah. Yes, it is. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, um, how can we um, do the flow, like make the flow so that the customers uh, make the payment first and then go to select the template? Is it possible? Yeah. Brian, you want to take over? Or? Yeah, yeah. Um, so really customizing the flow, um, you can do that. So say you were like, I don't want them to go right into building the websites. I want to collect the payment first. Um, we can definitely do that where we just have a paywall where they actually make the payment um, and then go right into the editor. Because on your publishing flow, um, on your back end on Duda, you can actually set it up to where it publishes the website right away um, instead of emailing you um, or have it go to a payment page. So instead of having the payment page at the end, you can have it up front and then you actually start collecting payments right then. Uh, like for us, we, we do it on the back end, but once they hit publish, they actually have to make the payment before the site goes live. And we, we just charge what our hosting costs would be. Uh, for hosting the actual website, um, if they want to do monthly or yearly. Did you test which works better, charging first and then letting them choose? Or yeah, or uh, I actually have. <laughs> um, I believe, um, you know, if, if you're doing a lot of lead gen, I always say, let them try it first. Uh, try before they buy. So I always say, encourage them, hey, let's let them go into the editor, let them try it out. Um, you know, a lot of the time that they're going to need your assistance with it, building the website. So this is way they try it out. Yeah, they might not finish a website. It's a great way to get in there and say, hey, like, let us let us help you build this. Let us design this website for you. Yeah, that, that sounds like like when you go to a shoot. Where, uh, what do you charge the client to build their own site? Ask Team Politico again. Yeah, um, so just kind of what I brought up, we just charge our standard hosting um, fee. Um, so for us, we actually charge 50 a month for the hosting, um, and that comes with our full support, um, helping make changes, those type of things. So they don't have to do that in the future, but it, it's just our standard fee. Dan, um, like these uh, automatic collections with the form, um, do you can you integrate them? How do you do that? Do you integrate them where exactly? With a form. With a form. So, for example, you make these collections, integrations, and how do you do that with a form? Yeah, for the collection integration, uh, you're going to have to look into the Duda's uh, collection API. They do have API to get all the collection from a website, create a new collection push in records to the collection or delete a record. So collect the for all, uh, data from the form, turn it into the JSON data that Duda accepts uh, for the collection. Then you can use any of those API calls to push in the data to the website that you want to push it to. So 
Okay. And uh, here's a question from Sharon Brewster. What does your full support include with your 50 monthly posting? Yeah, so it's actually for us, um, minus designing new pages and creating content, uh, we, we actually main, manage their websites for them. So anytime they need an image changed out or some content changed or uh, some SEO added or any kind of custom code, if, as long as it's to a current, current page, um, that's all included, um, as well as like any widget support. We have our own um, list of widgets that we've created inside Duda. Um, so they have the opportunity to use our widgets that we've created um, that are different than what Duda currently offers. So they get our full suite of all of our widgets um, that we have on our account. And can you use different website plot, plat, no, sorry, different website platforms when you do that? Yeah, uh, uh, not related to the previous question. Right, right. So um, here's the thing, right? As long as you have the API credentials, Right, you could make the API calls to the Duda endpoints to either create site, uh, create a customer, give them permissions, or redirect them to the dashboard. Um, you could, if you were to use a widget builder to build all of this, then definitely no, you won't be able to add this particular thing into other platforms. However, if you were to create this application using React or you know, vanilla JS or any of the other languages, then you could simply you know, put it in on any platform, you know, WordPress or Wix or anywhere that you would like, possibly. Absolutely flexible and everything can be automated. Can, can we, um, I've seen some templates which are using sometimes the structure which of the DOM or HTML5 elements that I don't really maybe like. So with API, we can actually pull that and change that and pull back. Do I understand this correctly? So you want to change certain element in your website? Yeah, for example, I've stumbled upon a template where there is um, H3, heading 3, instead mm -hmm. of uh, heading 1. Yep. And that is not very convenient for SEO. Right. I'm looking sometimes. Yeah. And uh, sure. not the best practice. So yeah. can I change that with API? Because I have not found it. Like when you go to the dashboard and try to customize it, there's nowhere where you can detach it from and then how easy is it to fix the HTML5 for, uh, with API? So uh, if you were to directly use the Duda templates, then it would not be possible. However, if you were to use a custom template and uh, these inputs that, are, uh, that you have on the websites, if you were to do the content injection into them, then you can definitely change you know, the styling properties or the HTML attributes of it. And also sometimes when you are living with some template on Duda and then you want to change it, sometimes when you just try from your dashboard to switch to another template, you lose, you may lose all the content actually. So it just right. goes off and you ah, what okay. should I do? How smooth it is, is it with API? Is it much more real yeah. possible um, for us? So let's just say you have a site, you don't like it, but you have all the information in the, into the content library, right? Uh, right off the back, Duda does not offer to, you know, Duda offers the option to reset the site. However, the data are lost. So what you could possibly do is use Duda's API to gather back all those information, store it somewhere, reset the site, and then push back again the data into the site. That way you will never lose it, right? Yeah. That, that's much more convenient. There's a question from Peter Bravo de los Rios um, about integration third-party payment through API on the e-commerce. Is this possible? Are we talking about the Duda's native e-commerce or the other e-commerce? Oh, you, you can... I guess either or. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I don't think with the native API there is an option to um, add a integrate a third party. However, uh, the old e-commerce you should be able to gain an API access to the store if you request it with the support team, and using that and certain documentations 
um, that Duda has on their support article. It tells you how to, you know, integrate custom, uh, you know, payment gateways to your e-commerce website. Yeah, and Sophia also kind of adds that it's possible. And um, there's another question from Eric Shapiro. If we have issues building the basic API, how does the standard Duda support have the knowledge to help? What's your what's your experience with that, if any? Yeah, um, so there is a knowledge base with everything with the Duda API. Um, so if you look at the help articles, they are all on there. Um, definitely need to be a little bit on the technical side and be able to understand it. Um, but if you do ever need assistance, we definitely can help you out with that. And I've also, from my experience, I can say that I found Duda Facebook group very helpful in answering all kinds of questions, even sometimes not related to Duda directly, uh, but even some hints on how to make something better within your website and uh, how to do this or that or fix something, even, yeah. even as I say, not Duda related. So about Duda API, you can always find lots of support with them. They are actually very helpful. I think Duda support is one of the best. Yeah, Duda uh, support yeah. team is great, I would say. Uh, they are able to you know help you out with any problems, I would say 99% of the time. And... I just love the support that Duda offers. Yes. And um, did you try, uh, it's another kind of question, uh, did you try to integrate schema in a different way that it's proposed usually? Can that be done with API? So sometimes schema is very tricky. You have lots of different um, templates for that and you can utilize them very differently. Have you tried doing that with yeah. API? Or no? Um there is an endpoint uh, which allows you to add schemas data directly into the website. Uh, I haven't personally used it much, but uh, when I tested it, yes, definitely it is possible to you know add the schema information uh, into the website using an endpoint that is available into the Duda's API documentations. Do you work mostly with the JSON-LD or do you also try to use micro data? I'm sorry, what was that? Uh, do In schema, do you usually work with JSON audio? or do you sometimes try to utilize microdata, what you prefer? Microdata would be much neater, I would say. Yeah, <clears throat> I would agree okay. with that for sure. I tried myself. I know that right now it is, uh, we didn't find a way how to do that, how to integrate open AI. API into Duda, but maybe in the future we'll be able to. And I think that many people might have this kind of question if there is some opportunity yet to integrate ChatGPT or something like that into it. Can can you expand on that? What what can we do with that right now? Yeah. Um, so that is something that I've been personally working on for a while, um, just because we do do a lot of SEO. Um, so it would be really great if I could just push that content I make right into the editor. Um, so there is a couple of ways. I know that Zapier has connections with a lot of the new API um, content for uh Forms. So if, if you kind of look into them and make sure that they do have integration with Zapier, then uh, you should be able to do that. Oh, okay, nice. Because I failed totally, fully. <laughs> it was just Control C, Control V, uh, copy paste uh, on my end. <laughs> um, there's a question, <laughs> a question from Peter Brava de Los Rios. Um, the product gallery is an amazing widget to connect your store. However, it should be great uh, if you could also create a product carousel. It would improve a lot the commerce yeah. page. So uh, we can also create custom widgets, right? So uh, using your um, e-commerce API, we can possibly create... a product carousel that will just display all of your products so definitely possible using the e-commerce api hand and uh, eric shapiro is uh, asking prashant uh, that um, uh, he says i believe you said all the api code can be hosted within duda 
If so, great. If not, I also do recommend third-party tools and servers like Postman. Yeah, um, so we do have cPanel and then Amazon hosting and Google Clouds for hosting several files. Um, yeah, I mean, if you want to use third parties, then those are the go-to options. Do you use Akamai by some chance as well? What was that? Akamai uh, or only Amazon and Google Cloud? Yeah, um, well, I personally love Amazon Cloud, so I try to stick with that. <laughs> Um, okay, and I have, I think, one of the last questions. Do the leads need to publish the website themselves, or can we automate that as well? Yeah, for sure. So uh, on our end, what we have done is whenever they click on a publish button, a pop-up appears where they can select different plans. And these, are, these plans are connected to our custom payment gateway, right now the Stripe. So they can click on publish, a pop-up appears, select the plan they want. We get a notification on our end that payment has been made. And once we verify payment is been, has been made, we have automation flow that will automatically publish the website. That sounds cool. My, Michael Spears is asking, what benefits are there to using the Duda platform to create and integrate widgets, um, custom widgets and larger apps via building outside of Duda and then adding to a Duda page? Yeah, um, so whenever you're you know, doing a large project, it can be a little hectic to put in all the code into a uh, custom widget. However, uh, Duda has this new feature for external app, which we are currently looking into it as it's a beta feature. What you can do is have your React application built or, or your vanilla JS or whatever you name it, and then have all of that information pull it up into your Duda custom widget. So no codes into the widget, less code into the widget, more code into your server. OK, I guess we'll be wrapping up that a bit. Uh, what I understood from your presentation and from your demo that it is uh, everything with Duda API is highly customizable, very easy to use. Uh, yeah. and. Uh, um, the editing is minimum and uh, everything looks very nice and beautiful. And uh, if you can also add something to it, and can what is the best way to reach out to you, contact you, ask questions, if any? Prashant? Yeah. Um, we do yeah, have. Brian. Yeah, Brian can take it over. Yeah. Um, okay. So <laughs> you can just uh, email us at support at webact.com. Um, that's the best way then we can be able to kind of look into any issues that you might have. Um, if you ever send us anything, always make sure you include screenshots or um, any kind of loom video or anything that would help us be able to troubleshoot the issue that you might be having. Um, but we're definitely happy to help. Yeah, if we can pop up the slide again, you'll be able to see our contact information there. Oh, yeah, maybe we can make it bigger, it's so small. Yeah, thank you. So, uh, do you by chance use any social media or anything like that? Forums? What do you like? Reddit? <laughs> yeah, um, you know, the, just like you said earlier, like the Facebook community group is great. Like, um, there's so many experts on the Duda platform now um, from when I first started that you can just jump in there, get post your question, and most of the time, you're going to get the correct answer. Do you have the knowledge base or something on your website or anywhere else where you publish something, cases or anything? Yeah, we do. So we have a couple of knowledge bases on our website. Um, it, it's at the footer of our website. You can jump in there and be able to get some answers um, if you're looking for something quick. Okay, I think that we are mostly done. Uh, anything else that I should have asked you, but I didn't? I think we're good on our end. Um, if anyone else has any questions, uh, feel free to email us at support at webact.com and we'll be happy to answer them. Also, if you go to our website, there is a form which is going to send an email to support at webag.com. So 
Say loud the floor. Either way. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you for inviting us. Yes. Thank you very much.